service of CNC Worldwide. The Daily is a service of CNC News and Jib Jab. Greetings, I'm Bud Lowell. Full AccuWeather forecast right across the top of all CNC local news pages. Because of business meetings, we're getting this out late, so this is the midday news instead of the morning news, and we're skipping the pictures. It's radio today, folks. The National Weather Service lifted the freeze warning for Rochester at 8 o'clock Monday morning as sunshine began warming up after the shot of cold air that came into western New York from the upper Midwest. Rochester got down to an official low of 32 degrees Monday morning, just about dawn, and that was the low point. New York's 11.3 million apple trees began blossoming last week. Growers were taking precautions Monday to avoid a repeat of last spring's late freeze that severely damaged the crop. This year, it looks as though the growers in the fruit belt of orchards across Wayne, Monroe, and Orleans counties have avoided disaster. A late freeze about a year ago hit the apple growers all across the region pretty hard. The USDA says it cut apple production in the Midwest and Northeast by about 1.3 billion pounds. Another kind of apple picking is concerning New York State Attorney General Eric Schneiderman. He sent letters Monday to the chief executive officers of Apple, Google, Motorola, Microsoft, and Samsung. He wants to know what they're doing to help protect their customers from smartphone theft. It's a rising type of street crime that's called apple picking. The attorney general says there is a statewide spike in the theft of iPhones and Android phones, with the crimes often turning violent, and people have even been killed over them. Schneiderman says the thieves wipe the stolen phones and reprogram them, then resell them on the secondary market. He's asking the cell phone makers to join with his office on technology to make wiping the stolen phones tougher or nearly impossible and removing the economic incentive for stealing them. There's a brief reprieve for motorists trying to get in and out of Bushnell's Basin. The New York State DOT says it's postponing the start of bridge construction on the ramp that connects I-490 with Route 96 at Bushnell's Basin in the town of Parenton. The bridge carrying the ramp was supposed to close Monday for demolition and reconstruction. The DOT says it has had to postpone the start of the project until May 28th. Construction is expected to take four months. They still expect to have it completed and the interchange reopened in September. Special honors are going out from the Monroe County Legislature this evening to Grease Police Officer John Ritter, as well as West Webster Firefighters Joseph Hofstetter and Ted Scardino. All three will be honored by Monroe County Executive Maggie Brooks and the Legislature in a special ceremony prior to Tuesday night's meeting. Hofstetter and Scardino survived the shootings in the Christmas Eve attack on the West Webster Fire Department. Officer Ritter came on the scene on his way to work, and he blocked traffic to keep the following responders out of the gunman's field of fire. Brooks' office says all local first responders will be recognized at the same time as heroes each and every day. The Buffalo Bills announced that GM Buddy Nix is stepping down on Monday, and CEO Russ Brandon says the Bills do have a plan ready to find his replacement. He says they'll execute it when the time comes. The Bills say Nix is transitioning into the job of a special assistant to the Bills organization. Less than three weeks ago during the NFL draft, Nix said he wanted to lead the Bills' rebuilding effort and see it through. Links to these and other stories are to the left of the player window. At the bottom of the page, links you can use to post news and information directly to us. Next news is as it happens. Updates are as necessary. I'm Bud Lowell, CNC News.